If we want to create multiple variables of the same type, for example, if we want to create 10 integers, instead of typing int a1 is equal to 1, int a2 is equal to 2, int a3, so on and so forth, instead of typing all of this, we can simply create an array. And an array holds all of those variables in one place. So here we can type int open close these square brackets. This indicates an array. And I can name this one nums is equal to new int like this. And inside of these square or square brackets that is, we can type number 10. This says that we have created a new integer array of 10 elements. Now, one thing that is specific for arrays is that they are fixed size. We have created here an array that has 10 elements. That means that it will have 10 elements. It cannot have more. It cannot have less. The size is fixed. Now, all of these elements that we have in this array at the moment, which are 10, their value is zero. And in the previous video, we saw loops and we use loops to process these arrays. So we can type for int i is equal to zero. And we can type as long as i is less than 10 because we have here 10 elements. And here we can type i plus plus. Now, one thing that is wrong here is that we typed here as long as i is less than 10. We do have 10 elements, but what if we decide, okay, we need 15 integers and here we have typed as long as i is less than 10. We will not process four of those integers. In order to fix that, we can simply use this nums, which is the name of our array, and we can ask it for its size. So you can simply type nums.length, and it will return how many elements we have in this array. Also, one specific thing for arrays is that the first element of the array is not at index zero because arrays are index based. If we want to access the first element, it's not at index one, but it's at index zero. So that is why we use these loops and we type as long as int i or first int i is equal to zero and then as long as i is less than nums.length. In order to see this in action, I'm going to print out everything in our array. So here I'm going to type debug.log and here I'm going to type elements or element like this. And here I'm going to say plus nums. So nums, open close square brackets and pass i. Open close square brackets using the array will give us access to the desired element. So if we want to access the first element, and I already mentioned that the first element is at index zero, we are going to type nums, open, close, square brackets, and zero. And this right here is going to return the first element in that array. If we want the second one, then we type one. If we want the third one, we type two, so on and so forth. But this will return that element at that index. Let us just demonstrate how many elements that we have. So element, not element, element. And here I'm going to go and I'm going to clear the console, run the game, and we are going to see that all of these variables have zero for their value because we did not add any value to them. Let's add the value. And here I'm going to copy this for loop and paste it right here. And in order to assign to every element, we are going to type nums. And here I'm going to type i. And this is going to go through each element in our array because we are using our for loop, which we saw even in the previous video, how i will be incremented by one every iteration. And it's going to be equal to, and I'm going to use a random dot range. And this is a function that we can use from Unity Engine and it will give us a range between two numbers. So let's say between, I don't know, one comma and 100. So this random range will simply return a number between one and 100. And it will assign that number to our i element. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to type 
element plus i and here I'm going to say again plus is like this and it will type element and it will give us the number of the element or the index of that element in the array and then it will give the value of that element and every value is going to be between random and one, one excuse me and 100. If I go back in my unity editor and run the game we are first going to add all of those numbers to our array and then we are going to print it. So element 0 is 74, element 1 is 78, element 2 is 46, so on and so forth. And you can do this on your own in your own Unity editor and read all of the values in your own console. Of course, the values for you are going to be different because there is a very little chance that all of these numbers are going to be the same with you and me. And we see here that element at index 7 is 19, element at index 8 is 34, so on and so forth. And this is how we can process all of these arrays. When we declare them just like this, all of their values is going to be zero. And of course, we are not limited to an array of integers only. We can have an array of strings, array of floats, array of game objects. Don't worry about that, don't be confused. We will see that in our game development, so please calm down, don't worry about it. We will see everything in depth and don't worry again if everything here is not crystal clear. It will be, trust me on that. Again, we are processing these arrays using a for loop and we can use this nums.length, meaning this nums array will return how many elements it has inside of it. Even if we put here 100, if we put 12, 13, any number that we change, this right here will return how many elements we have so that every time we will execute or add so many arrays in our, or excuse me, add so many values in our array. Now, one thing that we need to be careful with array is we can go out of bounds. That is index out of bounds. What that means? I already mentioned that our arrays are zero based. And if we want to access an element, for example, the first element, we type zero like this because the first element is at index zero. Now we have here 10 elements. And surprisingly, if we type here 10, the last element is not at number 10, because as I said, Arrays are zero base. The first element is at zero. The second one is at one. The third one is at two. And if you go like that, zero, one, two, three, it will go up to nine and that will be 10 elements. So the last element is at index nine. And you can count on your own fingers. So go from zero, one, two, three, up to nine and you will see that that is actually 10 numbers. And if I type here 10, we will not access an element. Instead, we are going to have an exception. And if I type here debug.log, and if I say the element, so element at index 10 is, and if I type like this, of course I need to remove this and or these semicolon from here. I need to end the statement right here. I cannot end the statement inside of these parentheses. Now if I try to execute this, and if I go here, clear the console, and if I run it now, we are going to see a problem. It says array index out of range. That means that we are trying to access the element at number 10, but we don't have that element. So this is a common mistake that beginners make. So make sure that you don't go above how many elements we have. So the last element will be at this nums length minus one. So nums dot length minus one. This is the index of the last element every time. So every time, even if you have 100, 1000, array of 5000 elements, the last element will be at that array dot length minus one. Again, I'm repeating, this is because of the zero based index. And because we have zero based indexes for arrays, our for loops are great for processing those arrays. Again, I'm repeating, if everything here is not crystal clear, please ask a question 
regarding this lecture and I will explain everything but everything that we saw here will be covered multiple times over and over again when we start developing our game so don't worry about that in short this was about arrays and how we can use them and again I will repeat we don't need to have only arrays of integers we can have arrays of strings of booleans floats doubles so on and so forth in short, this was about arrays and how we can process them. And when we start developing our games, we will see arrays in more depth.